Welcome to the Farm Bits Podcast, a product of Nebraska Extension Digital Agriculture. I'm Jackson Stancil. And I'm Samantha Teton. And we come to you each week to discuss the trends, the realities, and the value of digital agriculture. Through interviews and panels with experts, producers, and innovators from all sectors of digital technology, we hope that you step away from each episode with new practical knowledge of digital agriculture technology. Welcome to the fifth episode of the Farm Bits Podcast. For this episode, we are joined by Dave Crompton, CEO of OP Systems. OP Systems is a grain storage management technology company based out of Calgary, Alberta, Canada. OP Systems has been in the grain storage industry for 36 years, and they primarily service customers, whether farmers or commercial operators, through dealers and grain service outfitters throughout Canada, the United States, and 38 other countries worldwide. You'll hear Dave describe his founding of the company in more detail during the episode, but OP Systems was founded out of a personal need he had for measuring the performance of drying systems that he was selling. OP Systems has always provided temperature and moisture measurement through in-bin sensors. Over 36 years in the industry, these sensors have grown into automated control systems that integrate with weather data and other information to turn on fans, ultimately resulting in optimized grain moisture management. Through his years of experience in the grain storage industry, Dave has developed a breadth of knowledge and insights about the industry. At the end of the episode, we will discuss Dave's perspective on the future opportunities for grain storage and marketing, particularly how growers can get more value out of their products. Here's our interview with Dave Crompton, the founder and CEO of OP Systems. Dave, uh, we really appreciate you joining us this morning. Would you mind just giving us a little bit of a background on OP Systems? Um, you know, if we go to your website, a customer would see that you guys have been around for more than 30 years, started with on-farm bin monitoring systems in Western Canada, uh, and now you've moved into automated monitoring and alarm systems, uh, and also have a, a lot of different sensing technologies available for growers uh, and co-ops, whoever might be needing some sort of sensing technology uh, for grain management. So what else can you tell us about the history of the company? And oh. we'd love to hear it. Yeah, Jackson, thanks for uh, inviting uh, Opie into uh, your podcast and, uh, and and the reminder that we have been around, seems like forever. Um, Opie actually officially started in 1984, so it's been over it's 36 years now. And uh, yeah, we have the fortunate, uh, we're very fortunate having survived, uh, you know, to see a whole generational change. We first started the business. Uh, it was the advent of like fax machines. It was just a novel idea about how you would send you know, documents across uh, the ether and um, the personal computer was just coming around. And so now we're um, still here to be seeing the next transition into the whole area of, um, you know, cloud-based uh, technology and, uh, you know, all the technology that's coming to the agricultural uh, space. So, we uh, have been at the forefront of developing storage, monitoring storage management technology pretty much since we started. We uh, brought digital-based sensing technology to agriculture in the late 90s, and that's basically the backbone of our platform now. It's all digital-based, which allows us to do a lot more things and make for a lot more uh, simplistic installations, not having to deal with a lot of wiring in the old analog systems, the old thermocouple analog systems. And we've also... Um, been able to get our uh, technology to both 70 countries, um, both farm and commercial around the world. So we've had a lot of experience. We've actually brought monitoring and, and management uh, technology uh, to countries such as India and China. So we're quite proud of, um, of that, you know, transitioning them from a bagged system. You could imagine all the friction in a, in a, in a bag versus a bulk system, both in you know uh, managing the crop as well as getting it to market. So yeah, we have a long history. Uh, can you also expand then like what is going on today with your technology? What technologies are really offered by OP Systems? Right, so our, our forte is storage management. So monitoring and control systems are two legacy products that we've had for quite a long, you know, a couple of decades now is the Stormax handheld monitoring system. So for a smaller on-farm storage, you walk up to the bin, take a reading, it stores the data, it shows you the trends but uh, you have to go and get the data as opposed to our other legacy system that we call the Integris platform that uh, does automated monitoring alarms and automated controls. 
Mm-hmm. So if you want the system to turn your fans on and off automatically, it's the Integris platform. And uh, we have about 30,000 customers on those two platforms. And now where all of our energy is going into our new um, OB Blue cloud platform. And uh, we use, we basically build um, off the existing cabling systems. So you don't have to uh, replace, you can just add on to your existing uh, legacy systems. And, uh, but you get, once you get in the cloud, it really opens up a lot of opportunity as far as um, how to access the information. Uh, it's it's, it's um, on any technology on your phone, your laptop, it's uh, um, you know, storing all the data. So then we start to look at how we, actually use that data uh, both uh, up and down uh, the value chain on from the production side of precision ag down to the marketplace side. Since you've been in this industry for a while and as the founder and CEO of this, can you talk a little bit about how you changed the design over time and um, I don't know, the function of the remote monitoring and why that's so important? So what were the priorities as you work through the design of your products? Well, in the early days, it was a little bit more, you know, evolutionary uh, than uh, intentional. I mean, we just brought products into the market, into the farm market, and we modified them, beefed them up for the larger scale commercial storage. And then over time, we evolved into the the automated side of monitoring and then alarms and control. So it's been a progression, and you know, over the years, for instance, you know, developing the digital based technology, which is now the backbone. So we actually can put a lot of different kinds of sensors into a system on a single twisted pair of wires. So you'd be measuring temperature, humidity, moisture level, um, all on a uh, um, one twisted pair. So we've really built on that technology technology platform. We brought other technology out as well. So in sector, for instance, is electronic insect detection system. So really beefing up all of the sensing inputs and control outputs we put a lot of work into the grain management side as far as developing the control strategies so that you can do different things, whether you want to dry with air, dry with uh, supplement air with supplemental heat, whether it's, it's conditioning, whether it's, you know, taking the last couple of points out of the grain when it comes off the dryer so that you can, um, you know, increase dryer throughput instead of using the bottom, you know, core of the dryer for, for just for cooling. And then, of course, aeration for longer term storage. So all those control strategies and we continue to build on just making it simpler to be able to hit specific targets instead of, you know, having to be an expert on, you know, grain management per se, we want our customers to be focused on um, what really matters to them as far as their uh, market opportunities are concerned. So they dial in the market opportunities and then we help make sure that um, the system is going to work effectively um, to, to hit those targets in that, in that uh, time frame. Who is your target customer for your technological solutions right now? And, and what are the biggest opportunities for them to realize savings uh, in your eyes uh, from the technology that, that OP Systems offers? Yeah, we work with any grain storage practitioners, whether it be farm or commercial. But um, I come out of the farm side. That's how we started the business. Uh, I was uh, uh, as a sideline um, selling uh, aeration and in bin drying system. Natural air drying was really just taking off in the early 80s in Western Canada. And uh, uh, it became very popular as a, um, a more simplistic, lower cost, uh, you know, drying system for taking, say, five points off of uh, zero grains. So I've got a sweet spot for the farm market. We, we really enjoy working in the farm space. It's, it's the broader number of folks that are out there managing grain. But... Um, you know, we like to work with anyone that wants to enhance the value um, of their stored crops. So if it's the, uh, the if it's the farmer that's selling out to the commercial uh, elevator, we want to make sure that uh, they're selling at, 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 at the optimum uh, value, which gets to your other question about what, what, you know, where, what's the biggest savings or what's the biggest return on investment. And there's basically three major pillars to our value proposition. First and foremost, it's insurance. Okay, so you want to protect the quality. Um, once the grain comes into the storage, you can't really enhance the quality. All you can do is hold it. And um, what we want to make sure is you don't lose it. Um, because downgrading, um, you know, having problems around crusting. We hear about 
you know, issues around entrapment with compliance space entry. Well, that gets to the second point around best practice. You don't want to be going into the bin if you don't need to be going into the bin. So bringing the information out, being able to readily see that information and manage it really helps optimize the quality and, and, and in the safest manner. So, so that really quality is probably the biggest driver as far as a, a, the return on investment from the, from the uh, technology. And then we start talking about um, moisture is probably the next biggest driver because you know, grain is sold by weight, so water is money. That's one of our old saws. And if, as a farmer, you're not optimizing your moisture, um, taking it to the highest level that's uh, permissible for sale, then um, you're being taken advantage of because you're either going to be discounted for being over dry or you're going to be penalized for being uh, tough. So, you know, you don't want someone else blending and getting to that moisture. You want to be able to hit it yourself and, and get the maximum value. So quality first, moisture optimization second, be able to store longer with confidence because you've got a quality grain and you've got a good monitoring and management tool is really important. And there's two elements to that. One of them is around um, being able to hit market targets. So thinking of storage as a profit center, think about storage as a market maker, whereas, you know, you can hold and hit target markets instead of having to get rid of your grain at, at, at the low uh, prices. So with that comes the opportunity for carry. So you can actually be paid on particular contracts to store grain longer with confidence into the next spring, summer, so that you can hit those premium markets. Uh, and then after that, I think the biggest part, you actually asked specifically about savings, but the, you know, around savings, we're talking about electrical savings. Um, you can imagine, you know, if you um, have storage spread around a couple of different locations and you, you know, you're having to jump into your truck and drive out to the storage to turn on a fan and then you forget to turn it off. You, you have both, you have waste, you know, both in, in terms of electricity as well as um, shrink. Because anytime you run the fan, typically you're going to be driving a little bit more moisture out of the grain. And it's really a lot harder to get the moisture back into the grain once it's um, over dry. So you don't ever want to get it down to that place where you're inadvertently uh, removing more moisture. So electrical, labor, fumigation, less fumigation with confidence. Again, when you store, you don't need to fumigate as much. So I would say those are the biggest drivers as far as savings and uh, return on investment. That is an awesome overview of how important these systems are. What about on the inventory management side? So is this helping farmers make a decision on if whether they should store it on their farm or if whether they should take it straight to an elevator? Um, how is this technology potentially helping a farmer make those decisions at harvest? Yeah, great, great question, Samantha. So this gets into the whole area of um, supply chain, um, which is more towards the commercial side, like the co-ops. Um, for the farmers to understand what their inventory is, of course, they, they know both the quality and the quantity of the, of the, of the commodities they're storing, they can make, they can share the data, they can make better market decisions, they can you know, capture better market opportunity. But when you start working with, for instance, your local co-op, uh, now all of a sudden, you know, you know, the, the co-op could be looking at it going, hang on a second, we know that, that, that the best quality of storage is going to be on farm. You know, the farmers can do the best possible job typically smaller bins, better air systems, better, they're on site, um, you know, they have a vested interest. Um, you, you can't get better quality than that. So when we keep the grain on farm longer, and then we can route directly. So for instance, if, 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 if the corn's going to an ethanol plant, why should it go through the handling and then the loss, you know, half a point or point of loss every time Grain is handled. So when you take it out of the bin at the farm and you move into the uh, co-op or the commercial elevator, there's going to be losses and costs. And then you turn around and ship that grain out to, say, an ethanol plant. Well, why not just have it drop shipped? Why not just have the contract for the farm farmer to have, have direct ship to the ethanol plant? And it saves everybody. It frees up the capacity of, of capacity in the system and it, it allows for efficiency in, in supply chain. I mean, the, the bottom line is that you know, the better the information systems, the more readily available that uh, that that information is. Like, for example, on your phone, on your combine, uh, the better the decisions you can make. Is that is that been full? You know, what's what's the condition of that? Uh, is it dried yet? Uh, you know, can I actually sell grain the way it's sitting right now? Yep. Uh, that came out of the dryer, got finished in the bin. Um, you know, 
you can make decisions way better than than guessing or having to go and check the bin, which is really not going to happen, uh, given you know what all is going on at harvest. So, you know, the more available, you know, think about these. These are what we call real time systems. I mean, um, basically, the information's you know measurements being made and information being shipped up to the cloud, and then it's instantaneously available. And so to be able to turn your fans on and off and to be able to see what the condition and, and, and the level of the bin is, um, you know, to be able to share that data. If, someone, if someone's looking to find markets, uh, it's a buyer or someone helping you sell a grain, if they have access to that information, they can leverage that information to, you know, identify and capture uh, opportunities that come up. Where do you envision the biggest growth opportunity when it comes to grain storage management? Is it the connecting you know, what you have stored to a customer, or is there something else that you really think we should be looking forward to um, in the future of grain storage? Yeah, you know, there's there's the evolution of, of, of sensing technology. You know, there's uh, you know, CO2 sensors are coming out now, and uh, there's even, you know, um, wireless technology that, that is supposed to be able to measure the moisture across the bin. But the biggest win is is in um, applying the technology uh, for better management. Hmm. Um, you know, having the automated controls that I just alluded to a moment ago, and then having connectivity to the broader value chain. I think that's really where it's going. How all these different systems are connecting, so you don't have all, you know, a different you know precision system and a different inventory management system and a different marketing accounting system where everything is whether it's under one umbrella or whether it's just interconnected such that the data is flowing, that you've got the traceability so that you can um, stand that data up and, and, and allow um, stakeholders such as, you know, grain brokers or buyers or people hand, or supporting you with your grain management. We're bringing a module out in our platform. Now that we have a you know, really solid platform, you can build onto it with, you know, for example, grain management services. So if a farmer wants to take a holiday or if he doesn't want to be climbing the bins or checking the grain himself, he can outsource that component because farmers are, are challenged. I mean, they got, you know, it's hard to find really good help sometimes and, or, or um, you know, to keep up with the, all the different demands of, of, of a very complicated business when you think about farming, how many moving pieces there are yeah. uh, to, to, to manage effectively. So, you know, be able to have someone else watching over your grain, for example. In general, just having connected systems allows us to do uh, a plethora of different things. And I see that's the direction that we're heading. Excellent. I think you hit the nail on the head with the, it's more important. It's not just about collecting all this data. It only matters if you're using it and applying it. So I think that's awesome. We talk about that all the time in digital agriculture. So I'm really glad you have, you know, talked about that. Yeah. The biggest thing now, though, is, is I mentioned mean, earlier, is our um, cloud-based platform, which is really exciting because that opens up endless possibilities as far as connecting us into the overall agricultural value chain. And so um, we have um, one project that... Uh, um, Multi-year project that we're just running with a uh, precision company by the name of Farmers Edge out of Winnipeg, <laughs> whereby we're specifically focusing on protein-based crops. So, if you want to dial in specific uh, uh, characteristics and you want to sell into protein markets, for example, but really it's as much about it, it's sort of a precursor to traceability and uh, you know being able to know exactly what um, kind of conditions the grain was grown in and uh, what the main quality parameters are, whether it be protein oil starch, if you want to hit specific market opportunities, so connecting um, producers with with buyers, processors. We can do that. A lot of that, in, you know, it, the storage itself has, has been a bit of a black hole. You've got a lot of technology, a ton of technology upstream on, on production agriculture with, with precision ag. You've got a lot of emerging, um, interesting things happening on the marketplace side. Uh, but storage itself has been a somewhat disconnected component. And so by having a cloud-based offering, we can connect into the overall value chain so we can see that whole piece as far as pulling data up and across and moving it downstream. 
to the marketplace. So we can do it with partnerships. I mentioned Farmers Ed, so we're developing a large ecosystem of, of partners, whether it be, you know, from the grain cart, getting the actual um, yield and volume right out of the field and, just, and tying that directly into the bin. And the more that we can actually pull data in an automated fashion, the more reliable the system is going to be. Because, of course, you know, relying on manual intervention for data entry, especially when, you know, uh, producers are really busy, for, you know, for example, at harvest, um, th the more automated we can get, um, you know, the more accurate, the more calibrated the sensors, the better the information, the, the better the management that comes with that. So building up our partner ecosystem with this cloud, Blue Cloud program is uh, really where we're going forward over the next couple of years. So w when you think about, you know, trying to have traceability with fields and working with Farmer's Edge, I imagine one of the biggest challenges there is, is trying to match the grain and, and the field that that grain is coming out of to the actual bin that it's being stored in and, and kind of tracking that grain over time. So how, how have y'all been able to overcome that challenge? I know you're talking about automation, but I imagine that's a big, a big challenge still. Yeah, um, excellent question, Jackson. I mean, that's that is the challenge, and that's you know we're just early days in this project, so that's one of the goals, the longer term goals of this project over the next couple of years, is to really look at what kind of technology we can tap to be able to um, automate that as much as possible. Because you have to, you know, at the end of the day, you have to rely on the manual component to say, yeah, sure, I know exactly that uh, that bushel of grain came out of uh, you know that part of that field. Um, at that moisture content, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, you, at the end of the day, when you route that cart, maybe even to um, a truck that then goes to the um, to the bin, how do you know that that's the, uh, indeed, um, you know, uh, where that grain came from? So we're looking at different, there are different technologies. We're always looking for folks that are developing solutions like that. Uh, but that's one area right now where we have to oftentimes have to consider the manual component to, to make sure that um, that uh, the grain did in fact hit the target uh, anything downstream. You know, when when there's a contract, um, how does the buyer know if they if they made a, an agreement on a particular in a grain? How do they know that that's where that grain came from? So these are the kind of things that we need to solve um, going forward. No, I have heard of. A few things about blockchain potentially being an opportunity within, you know, grain logistics uh, and marketing, kind of locking in contracts and, and having those on the blockchain. Um, is that another opportunity that may be available here in terms of that automation to make sure it's traceable? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a big part of the, uh, the surety, the traceability. Blockchain will definitely be an element that uh, we'll be looking at and partnering with others that have that expertise. We want surety. Think about it. I mean, if you, if you have a, a producer that um, can contract directly to a buyer. You know, they they both want to build up that trust. So you want to have mechanisms like blockchain, and but other trust build systems, right? Like, um, you know, the, the producer has a profile of being a trusted supplier, and that you have the data to, to be able to actually show that linkage uh, through the system. Can you kind of talk about how you're planning on getting this technology? to farmers that are trying to match their protein levels and what that means for them as farmers. How is this technology working for wheat farmers? Right. So, um, you know, coming from Canada, of course, we're into a lot of small grains, right? So mm -hmm. less about corn, a little bit of beans, but a lot about, um, you know, canola, wheat, barley, pulses, et cetera. So the same basic tenets hold true no matter what the grain type or the characters that you're driving for. I mean, if you're specifically looking for protein, that happens to be the sort of genesis of this program that we're involved with. But really, it's, it's, it's about, um, you know, traceability, blockchain, what, you know, is, is, is any, any type of grain, any kind, any kind of characteristic that you're trying to drive for. If specifically you're looking at protein, you might want to have a protein um, meter on your combine. Uh, there is that technology out there today that you can actually literally drive through your field and cut out, you know, specific um, protein. If that's, if that's what, you know, you're after, you know, with your wheat. Um, but it could be anything. It could be starch. It could be, you know, getting barley to, barley to go malt. It could be any, any characteristic that you're really wanting to hone in on, on for a particular value-added market opportunity. When we were at the American Society of Agronomy conference last year, there were several presentations uh, with people talking about basically protein mapping uh, in, in wheat fields. 
um, which I thought was really interesting because I was not aware of that capability. And I think there's actually a project right now that is trying to get started doing some wheat protein mapping here in Nebraska with one of our extension educators. So that's, that's an exciting opportunity if you're really able to get high resolution on, on that, that data. Um, you know, it'll tie right into what's, I guess, planned with Farmer's Edge. So, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's the old song, right? I mean, great data and we're amassing so much data. And there's a real question about what, what is the value of that security that, that your data is not going to be used against you, that, uh, you know, there's a value there. And if you're going to be investing in systems, um, whether it be precision or otherwise, you, you've got to see where that ROI really, really makes sense. But we're making more and more sense of the data. And, and the more data that we store, you know, the more that we can go back and back flash and apply things like AI, you know, artificial intelligence or to, to or machine learning to, to, to actually mine value out of the data. So the nice part about our technology is that we're not putting the systems in for the data. That's just sort of a, a very pleasant side effect of the systems that we need that data to be able to monitor and, and optimize but, and control. But by in so doing, we end up collecting a lot of data that we build up over time and it's cheap to store data. So we have multiple years of historic data that we can go back and look at. And the really cool thing about data is that the, the, this is one of the rare commodities where the more you use it, the more valuable it becomes. So the more things we learn about the data, the more things we can do with the data. So, and then that helps sort of, it's sort of a, you know, a, a self prophesizing value driver in the sense that, um, that then you can justify, um, you know, spending money on systems that will collect the data. But again, I mean, it's a nice side effect because we're already um, pulling a lot of data just in the virtue of the operation of our system. Is this with the idea that eventually farmers won't have to just be price takers, that they'll be able to kind of leverage maybe specialty crops or leverage different quality of their grain um, in a way that they can kind of ask for a higher price or a premium? Absolutely. I mean, anywhere you can find a value-added opportunity, anywhere you can differentiate, um, anywhere where you can actually even maybe join like you know if you have other producers that have similar product but you yourself don't have enough volume to fill the contracts whether it be farmers getting together whether it be brokers that are organizing these activities again because you know if you think about a grain uh, broker somebody that's helping you with your grain marketing and uh, they have access to the information you can let um, that you know uh, information on particular bins or or types of grain or whatever um, and help them try to find um, better market opportunities. So anywhere you can differentiate and get away from the, you know, commoditized notion of, uh, you know, especially with, you know, crops like corn, the better off you are to identify where you can find those kind of markets. And I, and I, I hate to say it as well, but the reality is um, if you look at, when we talk about marketplace, I mean, that's technically a word that's being banded around, around the whole disintermediation of, of the, um, system from uh, producer to buyer. And so if you can cut unnecessary steps out of that chain, that the value can come back to the producer. If the producer isn't having their grain commingled, commingled uh, to, to uh, especially on export, to a lower quality standard, you know, they can uh, enjoy the benefit of, of, of the higher value with the higher quality product. Because typically the farmers are, are shipping a really high quality product with really low levels of, of admixture of, of, of FM. And, uh, but that's not exactly what the buyers necessarily see once it's gone through the system. So who's benefiting from that and, and who should benefit from that? So do you see the direct to consumer direct to, you know, whoever the value adder is, do you see that market growing quite a bit right now? And, and is that really enabled through well, the data? It is, it already is through in, in, in uh, in, in real, you know, um, niche uh, market opportunity in areas that uh, you know, we're connecting to more, much more directly, absolutely already happening. It, I don't know how meaningful it's happening, but certainly the, uh, I, I believe there's a trend in that, in that direction. So can we talk about how far out do you think that this is to be like commonplace? Because like you're, we're starting these partnerships right or right now and it's getting there slowly, but how far out do you think we are from this being like really common practice? 
common practice? That's a great question. You know, uh, one of the biggest opportunities for us is the uh, U.S. on-farm storage market. You know, I would think that some type of monitoring system is going into a, a better percentage of, of the new storage that's going up. But uh, historically, uh, you know, I think the, the safe number is that less than 10 percent of U.S. on-farm storage has any kind of monitoring system in it. Hmm. And so, you know, we have to get, we see that as a huge opportunity, but then it's also a paradigm that we have to get beyond and say, well, where, where do people see the value in better management? And, and I think that ties back to, do we see better market value added market opportunity? So it's sort of hand in hand, hand in glove with, um, you know, how we develop these markets and create the infrastructure to be able to um, capitalize on these on these types of opportunities. And for instance, in the Canadian system, it's already kind of set up that way in, in the sense that we have smaller storage. This this that lends itself more easily to segregation. You know, as soon as you start putting grain into a you know quarter million, half million bushel bin, then it, it, you know it's getting it's it's getting blended down to its you know whatever the common quality denominator is. But the um, you know, it's where you can find these opportunities, like for instance, with uh, farmers loading grain into sea cans you know, and, and backhauling sea cans to Asia. So that's a, those are smaller lots. We're talking like twenty-five ton lots, but selling standalone monitoring systems, but being connected into the overall uh, value chain. Um, I think that helps too, where, where producers can make sense out of how they can, you know, not just get information on their phone as opposed to having these. You know, monitors they can't remember where you know they, where they left them, or um, you know uh, that the information is coming to them. That, that it actually connects into a, into a, into a bigger system, whatever they're using for their farm management. So, if a farmer, like let's say a farmer is listening to this and they want to learn like how to get started, how to reach out to somebody at OP Systems and think about getting started. What do they need to know? Like, is this something that they should think about for their new grain systems? Can they retrofit it onto their old ones? But maybe more importantly, like, is this customizable for their operation? Or what do you recommend? I don't know. Does this make sense of what should a farmer really know about getting started with a grain advanced system? Yes, it's not a, um, you know, it's not a simple kind of a, Product that you just go buy off the shelf, right? Um, <laughs> sort of, it's got to be fit um, to the bins. And, you know, all farms have bins of different sizes, and whether the bin is, um, you know, got a structural roof or not, whether uh, it's a new construction, which is much easier to install systems into when the bin roof is on the ground. You know, as the bin is being jacked versus a retrofit application where you have to get into figure out how to get installation done on a pre-existing bin. Um, Sizing the system up, how you're going to integrate into, you know, controls for for automated fan operation. It, you know, it's best to talk to someone um, that is really um, boned up. That's a, you know that, that is very conversant in the space. So, you know, we've got uh, some great dealers like uh, Hynek Construction out of Southern uh, Nebraska. Not to be excluding excluding anyone. Sorry if I, if I did, but. Uh, I would recommend the, that conversation, both from a standpoint of, you know, get someone who's knowledgeable. They can go through a, a bit of a consultative process to say, well, really, what are you trying to do with the system? What are you trying to do with your grain more specifically? You know, what would you like to be able to accomplish? And so that the right system is matched up to um, the needs and the opportunity. And then, um, and then logistically, the right um, equipment is installed. Thank you, Dave, for joining us today on the Farm Bits podcast. Grain storage is often an overlooked aspect of farming and digital technology, but in reality plays a vital role in preserving the commodity that you worked all year round to grow, and it directly influences your bottom line. So my favorite part was his comment that creating all this data doesn't really matter. It's about the decisions that you make from that. So, and making those decisions in a way that the grower doesn't have to take the time to really think about it. Um, it's a system that uh, really makes farmers and commercial operators' lives easier. For sure. And I thought, you know, one of the most interesting aspects of the interview is, is his discussion of their new partnership with Farmers Edge and working to connect precision agriculture data that's collected in the field 
to some of their grain bin management data that they have with the ultimate goal of creating greater value for farmers' products through these value-added market supply chains. I think that's going to be a really big opportunity in the future of, of agriculture and precision ag specifically. I think that's something everyone can get behind is a higher value commodity. <laughs> no doubt. If you are interested in learning more about OP Advanced Grain Management Systems, please check out the website and contact information included in the show notes and podcast description. Thanks for joining us and hopefully we'll see you next week. Thank you for taking the time to join us today on the Farm Bits Podcast. We would like to thank Nebraska Extension for their support of this podcast and their commitment to providing high quality informational material to members of the agricultural community in Nebraska and beyond. If you enjoyed this episode and it sounds like something you'd listen to each week, subscribe to the podcast and set your notifications to let you know each time we release a podcast. We would love to hear from you with your feedback. So if you have comments or questions for us, please reach out to us over email on Twitter at NEDigitalAg or in the review section of your favorite podcast platform. See you next week on another episode of Farm Bits. <laughs>